Hello, my fellow schizotypals. Good fucking Friday. Welcome back to the show. High Lit with Carlisle Fletcher. What up, doe? Cannabis science, psychedelic science, classic lit, independent music, and urban planning. What are we getting into today? We're going to get into a little bit of uh, how neuroticism and genetics might uh, affect teenagers' choice to use cannabis in the first place. Um, some other stuff like that, where we also have, uh, well, fuck, in my life, let me just... Yeah, no work-related injury, and then also, like, how, uh, cannabis affects memory and things like that, uh, free recrawl. Uh, then after that, we're just gonna be basically playing Minecraft for the rest of the day. It's gonna be a pretty chill episode. But, uh, also, I just got that, uh, just got, just heard from Skeletal Lightning, and they're down with, uh, music on the show, so that's fucking cool. Um, cool, cool, cool. Just, you know, good times. Good, good times. Uh, let's get into what we got. Uh, so, here's what I've been working on recently. So, while 2020 research found no association between past year cannabis use and work-related injury, this seems to me that cannabis is not built for directionless intelligence. You don't take the SAT after smoking weed, which, yeah, I did, but don't do it. Um, so, from, from, from Washington State, um, they were doing a Zoom study where they had all these people via Zoom calls, and they were studying particularly, so they had high-potency flour, uh, which is above THC without CBD, high-potency flour with CBD, high-potency concentrates with above 60% CBD, or THC, with CBD. Uh, and again, they were over, they were observed over Zoom video conferencing while inhaling the product or remaining sober, and then were administered test of everyday life memory, perspective, source, temporal order, and false memory, and decision-making um, over Zoom. So, participants were required to be fluent in English, 21 years old, and free of serious ne neurological and medical conditions, including pregnancy and lactation, learning disabilities, and serious psychiatric disorders. Participants were excluded if they reported heavy alcohol use, more than four drinks a week, more than four times a week, heavy smoking, more than 30 cigarettes a week. Wait, how do you have, how do you drink less than four times, how do you drink less than four drinks four times a week? So more than, or is that, or is that compound more than four drinks more than four times a week? So 16, I don't know, whatever. Uh, any illicit drug use in the past six months and or history of sub uh, substance abuse diagnosis or treatment to reduce risk of adverse effects since they had to be experienced cannabis users. Um, they also had to access a computer with a webcam and stable internet connection. Um, so they were doing mood, anxiety, and stress ratings. So what they found was that there were changes over the over time. Um, so generally decreased over time with subtle differences in these changes across groups. Importantly, there was no group differences in the rating of mood, anxiety, or stress at any given point time point, with the exceptions of stress rating after one minute, which were significantly lower in the THC flower and concentration groups than the sober control groups. Um, so that the THC plus CBD flower group had significantly poorer free recall of the pictures on the source memory test than the sober control group, THC flower group, and the concentrate groups. Uh, similarly, the, CB, the THC plus CBD flower group performed significantly worse on the free recall trial of the false memory test. These results indicate that high-potency cannabis with CBD is detrimental to free recall. Further, as shown in the table, the THC flower and concentrate groups had lower discrimination in indice indices indices i don't know i gotta learn that word for pictures on the source memory test uh, relative to the sober control groups finally relative to the sober control group the thc flower group the thc plus cbd flower group and concentrate groups demonstrated that increased susceptibility to false memories for unrelated words while the concentrate group showed further increased susceptibility to false memories for related words um and then finally to wrap that up um, so, what the goal of the study was to examine the acute effects of high-potency cannabis on cognition. Perhaps one of the most interesting and novel findings um, was that participants randomly assigned to use cannabis concentrate self-titrated after significantly fewer puffs and yet reported comparable levels of intoxication and demonstrated equivalent levels of impairment as those who inhaled the flowered products. There's many concern and speculation that extremely high-potency cannabis concentrates will magnify harms, but the absence of cannabis concentrates in the NIDA drug supply has resulted in very limited research on the actual use or effects of, on humans. 
Present findings indicate that experienced cannabis users simply use less of these higher potency products to achieve the same levels of intoxication and impairment. As such, it is possible that concentrates may even reduce harm by diminishing the amount of the product that is inhaled into the lungs. So, um, there's, uh, since I was a child, there was that argument that dabs were like the cocaine of coca leaf. But the thing about it is that you didn't see, you don't see people regularly chewing coca leaves. You know, you don't see people who are just doing that um, all to their day you know, like in this country. And then like, you don't see people then alternative users using cocaine to get to that same high. You know, you see people who are only using cocaine to get to these absurd highs. Uh, meanwhile, with cannabis, you have people who are smoking every day, and then you have people who switch over to concentrates that are aiming to get that same level of high, but with less product. That's what this uh, seems to be suggesting. Clearly, future research is needed to better understand what con whether concentrates enhance or mitigate the potentially detrimental effects of acute cannabis use on physical health and or cognition. Um, so, despite the use of high-potency products, we failed to define, to detect any significant effects on any of these outcomes for... Uh, perspective memory, temporal order memory, resistance to framing, and sunk cost biases over underconfidence and consistency and risk perception. So, no, they're not seeing that they're just going crazy. Um, so, though not all studies included in a review that saw THC may include risk taking provided evidence for acute cannabis induced impairments in decision making, and it is unclear in what context or conditions these findings are detected. So, in general, it appears that the acute impact of cannabis on decision making processes are far less reliable and robust than its effect on free recall. It is also possible that we fail to detect significant differences on the measure of the prospective study, temporal order memory, uh, and non-normative decision making because participants in all four groups were already impaired by the chronic use of cannabis and that the acute effects of cannabis simply do not extend beyond the chronic effects. While, to our knowledge, no previous research has been examined on the effects of chronic cannabis use on temporal order memory or most aspects of non-normative decision-making, previous research has shown that chronic cannabis users demonstrate greater sunk cost propensity. The meta -mal uh, da -da. So, yeah, you know, we're going through it. And what was really interesting here is that you have this THC CBD products. The, the, they were using the study enough to produce the protective... So the CBD was not substantial enough to produce the protective effects previously observed, maybe. So while we aimed for higher CBD concentrations, they ex provide, proved exceptionally difficult to find in high-potency flour. Nevertheless, uh, Morgan et al. were not able to replicate their finding that co-administration of CBD protects against the memory impairment, impairing effects of THC. Indeed, there is contradi contradictory evidence that CBD can potentiate effects of THC. Specifically, previous preclinical research has shown that administering CBD with or before THC can increase concentrations of THC relative to administration of THC alone. Human studies pertaining to uh, pharma pharmacokinetic interactions between THC and CBD are limited, but one study found that the inhalation of cannabis containing 11% THC and 11% CBD resulted in higher plasma concentrations of THC than cannabis containing 11% THC and 1%, less than 1% CBD. And in some cases, CBD or cannabis contained balanced CBD, THC CBD ratio caused greater functional impairment than CBD dominated cannabis. As such, products used by our THC plus CBD flower group must have had have caused more potent effects than those used by the THC flower group because CBD exacerbated effects of THC. Very interesting. Very interesting because everybody's like, CBD is not psychoactive, CBD is neuroprotective, CBD is like going to really help with your THC. What we're finding here is that CBD can actually work in tandem with THC to increase THC's levels in the bloodstream. So, it uh, doesn't seem that simple. It doesn't seem that simple. Um, uh, I think that CBD is, it's, I think the reason why it got so overblown is because it's not federally uh, legalized. Um, but, you know, uh, I, I think they're not, you know, it's not federally legalized and it's like all that. So it's like uh, THC has that like black sheep uh, idea. Whereas with CBD, yeah, it's just widely accepted due to the fact that it's not limited by the FDA or federal law. So I think that that is the real reason why, I mean, I think that there is something that I think is very underrated. Maybe, maybe maybe underrated is not the correct word, but um, so results also failed to support our hypothesis that concentrates would exacerbate cognitive impairments. However, as previously discussed, participants randomly used to stimulate fewer lower puffs and subsequently self-reported the same level of intoxication as individuals randomly assigned to inhale flower. 
Um, once again, these important novel findings suggest that all three cannabis using groups self titrated to achieve comparable levels of intoxication and impairment. Thus, it is possible that flower and concentrate groups do not significant, differ significantly in the overall amount, overall amount of THC they, they ingested, despite differences in primary in product potency. However, a recent study revealed dramatically higher blood concentration of THC in its primary metabolite in individuals who have recently used a co concentrate relative to those who have inhaled flour. Nevertheless, the study also failed to detect greater cognitive impairments in concentrated users than flower users. Um, so I think that what we really need to be talking about here is bioavailability. So we've talked about pure green and we've talked about water-soluble cannabinoids. Um, and so like the thesis with them is that, so you're made of water. So if you have a water-soluble compound, like a spray or a tablet or something like that, then it can enter your bloodstream within 10 minutes and it can act as a one-to-one, -one, maybe not perfectly, but a one-to-one -one ratio of you're, getting, you're eating five milligrams or you're taking five milligrams of THC. All of that will be dispersed into your blood barrier in your mouth or in your nasal, like whatever. And then that will be able to go through your body versus the bioavailability of smoked THC or oil soluble, where it's like, we don't really know what degree of cannabinoids are being activated through these processes. We can't really control for them. So it's like, it's much more difficult to talk about that in a medical setting. However, there you get into, you get into personal liberty. And that's why it's really important to cover it with insurance is not that cannabis needs to be the medicine of the future, but if people want to rely on cannabis as an option for them, um, then they should be entitled to have that, you know, they should be entitled to have that option, especially with the support of an insurance agency, because like, you know, medication is expensive. And like, also, um, first off, a lot of the cannabis that we have is grown in the state, so it's American businesses, um, and it's cheaper uh, than a lot of the medication that's on, that's available. So, you know, that's where, we're pushing towards things. Uh, so in the medical march forward, research such as this will prove crucial in minimizing highs and maximizing effectiveness. So what we have here is based on data from molecular dynamic situations. Um, so they put, t they, they, they put pep peptides, which is like, so they, they took a chemical and added that THC. So it's like they have the THC application and then they have this peptide. So then the researchers gave the most promising peptide to mice orally along with the THC injection. So they gave them the peptide and then injected them. They tested the, the mice's pain threshold and memory. Uh, mice treated with both THC and the optimized peptide reaped the pain relieving benefits of THC and also showed improved memory compared with mice treated with THC alone. So uh, this is a mouse study, you know, that doesn't really mean too much for you and I, but what it shows to me is that we're developing these things where it's like we're getting further and further away from the recreational and the high aspect. And we're getting further and further into how can I help you with causing the least amount of distress to you psychically um you know because it's like we're not trying to go for a zero effect profile we're trying to go under opiates we're trying to go under day quill you know we're trying to be like a melatonin tier medication where it's like you can get a water soluble cannabinoid that will not get you high but instead will just relieve your pain and make it easier for you to just get around that's what we're aiming for that's what we really want to be uh you know advocating for so here uh we got kevin Kevin from the U of M, and he says fibromyalgia is not easy to treat. He was just doing a study on it, uh, often involving several medications with significant side effects and modest benefits. Uh, further, many alternative therapies like acupuncture and massage are not covered by insurance. For this study, the team focused on 878 people with fibromyalgia who said they used CBD to get more insight into how they use CBD products. The U of M team found that more than 70% of fibromyalgia, people with fibromyalgia who use CBD substituted CBD for opiates or other pain medications. Of these participants, many reported that they either decreased use or stopped taking opiates and other pain medications as a result. I was not expecting that level of substitution, not uh, noting that the rate is quite similar to the substitution rate reported in the medical cannabis literature. People who said that they use CBD products also contain THC, had higher odds of substitution and reported greater symptom relief. Again, so that's what we're finding with the other stuff is that CBD THC is actually, you don't, you don't put you know, you don't put them together so that they work worse or that they cancel out. You put them together so that they have this higher efficacy of effectiveness. So yet the findings that products containing only CBD also provided pain relief and were substituted for pain medication is promising and merits further study. 
our future study. The team noted that without much of the widespread use of CBD is occurring, that much of the widespread use of CBD is occurring without physician, physician guidance and in the absence of relevant clinical trials. Even with that lack of evidence, people are using CBD, substituting it for medication and doing so, saying it's less harmful and more effective, he said. Uh, he stresses the need for more controlled research into how CBD may provide these benefits as well as whether these benefits may be due to the placebo effect. So what I love about him is I think that as a researcher, he's always very keen on representing the other side where it's like he's seeing cbd and he's like all right so is this placebo is this legitimate how do we like well this study isn't properly controlled you know he's like he's always going in to talk about it and like trying to see what could possibly be wrong and having that philosophy means that every time he does find something i have confidence that it's well researched well said and that it's like something i can actually s cite um because he spends so much of his time trying to undo his work that it's like the work that stands is really solid and that's what i really appreciate from the u of m is i feel like that is kind of the atmosphere that they've been building um so and here we have uh <clears throat> a fascinating link between neuroticism depression cannabis use and genetics so our analysis suggests that some early adolescent behavior and traits like depression neuroticism and acting out can be uh indicative for cannabis use later in life said Rowan Palmer, serious uh, senior author of the paper and assistant professor in Emory's Department of Psychology, where he heads the Behavioral Genetics of Addiction lab Laboratory. Uh, decades of research have shown that the behaviors have a genetic component, added, adds Leslie Brick, lead author and assistant professor in the Department of Psychiatry and Human Behavior in Brown's Alpert Medical School. And while there's not one genetically influenced trait that determines whether you're going to be a long-term cannabis user, our paper indicates that there are polygenetic effects across multiple inherited behaviors and traits that show a propensity for increased risk. Brick, a longtime co collaborator with Rohan, also holds an adjunct f faculty appointment in Emory's Department of Psychology. The Transmissible Liability Index is a well-known measure for a constellation of heritable traits that may appear during the development toll years that are associated with the risk of the substance use disorder. For the, the current paper, the researcher wanted to tease out which one of these heritable characteristics might be associated with, meetable, with repeatable marijuana cannabis use in, later in life. Um, the researchers drew detail from the National Longitudinal Study of Adolescent Health, or Ad Health, which includes a nationally representative sample of 20,000 adolescents in grades 7 to 12 in the United States who have been followed into adulthood. Comprehensive data from early adolescence through adulthood was collected on health and health-related behavior, including substance use, personality, and genetics. From the current paper, the researchers identified a large homogenous subgroup of individuals from the Ad Health study, about 5,000 individuals of European ancestry, for their final analytic study. They then leveraged the existing genome-wide association studies to examine whether certain heritable behavior traits noted during adolescence were associated with a transmittable liability index, and whether any of these traits were also associated with the risk for later cannabis use. The results showed that a small portion of the risk for repeated cannabis use into adulthood can be attributed to the genetic effects of neuroticism, risk tolerance, and depression that can appear during adolescence. What this work mar while this work marks an important step in, in identifying genetic factors that can increase the risk for cannabis use, a substantial portion of factors that raise the risk remained unexplained, Palmer says. We've shown how you can use existing data to assess the utility of a polygenic risk score. More studies are used to continue to identify unique genetic and other environmental sources for the risk of long-term problematic use of cannabis. Um, so neuroticism, depression, all this stuff, you know, like having a negative life and I'm assuming PTSD and I'm assuming abuse and I'm assuming all this stuff is going to be, yeah, it's going to be tied to, you know, it's going it's to be tied to cannabis use. No shit. Like people are going to try to do things that make them feel better, something that can help them escape just the shitty realities of like, you know, day-to-day -day life. And like, I don't blame them. I'd be doing the same shit. I do do the same shit because uh, as somebody with like OCD and all, et cetera, you know, it does really help with just like not being so fucking, uh, you know, not being so wound up, uh, not being so wound up and just like, you know, obsessed with like trying to control things and being productive and all that. Like that's where cannabis really shined for me. And it's like, well, everybody in my entire life, so I, ever since I was 12, was making fun of me for being a pothead. And they, they tried to buy weed off me. And, you know, it's like, and at first I was like, oh my God, this is kind of mean. But then it's like, um, you know, at, that, then at a certain point, I just learned that I'm getting distracted because I'm trying to look for a Minecraft build. Um, 
But at a certain point, yeah, I just gave up, you know? Where it was like, I don't need to try to control everything. I don't need to be, like, aware of everything. I don't need to know everything. I can just, like, literally relax and just try to feel okay. And try to just, like, you know, have a decent day. And that that is fine enough by itself, you know? Like, that does not require um, any more any more from me. Um, so I think what we're going to do... I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and uh, we're gonna try to I know that this is annoying but we're gonna try to see about building with brick this is not the right fucking server <laughs> yep so that was the that was the that was the medical segment um, just gonna be fucking around on the Minecraft world for a little bit, uh, just for you know. Oh my God, wow! You can see the. I'm gonna wait for that to start working for a second. I guess I'm just gonna close out of the Minecraft because uh, this is. Oh my God! Control Alt Delete. Fuck you. Cool. So that's crashed, and now we're gonna relaunch that. Um. It's fucking hot. You know that. But uh, I mean, I don't know. There's not, probably not like much to show on the Minecraft world, so it's not gonna be like too much of a major update to be like, "Hey, look at my fucking world." But does it just not wanna? Do we just? Are we being? Are we banned? We're we not allowed to have Minecraft. Maybe. We're back up. We're back up. Cool. But uh, is this gonna is this gonna work, or do I have to restart this shit again? Fuck my life. Wow. God damn it. <laughs> We're restarting the fucking Minecraft. That's what we have to do. Um, but that is obvious. The world everybody knows. I'm I'm actually really excited about the skeletal lightning talking to them because uh, they're fucking cool. Um, we're also just probably gonna fuck around with Minecraft world for like 17 minutes, considering that it's like fucking. I am sweating. I am sweaty. Here we go. Awesome. So now we're back in the world. And there's no fucking sound. And that is, you know what? I'm just so grateful that there's no sound. That makes me really fucking happy. And that's because this isn't even plugged in. So, God, I wish we had centralized AC up here. That would be really cool. All right, cool. I didn't think. I, I think I heard a sound, so that works. I think it's coming out of the fucking computer again. Yeah. I uh, I shouldn't have a show. I shouldn't have a show. That or I should have a single person on production staff, but hey, that, you know, you either need somebody who's willing to help you out or you need money, so. Till then, I am production staff talent and writer, so, uh, hey-o.
You just gotta do every fucking thing yourself because human beings are not to be trusted in any slight regard. Trust me, I'm a paranoid, uh, I'm a paranoid guy. So, you know, if you trust paranoid people, that means that you'll never be betrayed or found out because. <laughs> Wow, I already killed like five minutes literally turning off and on a fucking video game. So I'm feeling pretty good about my ability to kill time. Um, finally, now. Yes, there we go. Audio. Yay. Oh, sweet sound of my legs breaking. Amazing. Her. Fucking this guy. This fucking guy. Do we have anything interesting? No. 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 Uh. Yeah, I know. I understand the show's strange. But, uh... I don't know, he's gotta... You know, we're here every week, so... Hang out, have a good fucking time. Live streams are coming eventually. I know I just keep talking about that shit, but that is hard to do well. You know, that is just a hard thing to figure out how to do well. Because you have to have everything super fucking stable. Um. Anyways. Looks like I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I kind of wanted to build... I kind of want to build like this uh, like brick courtway. It's so, like I want to build like row houses, but like where it's like they have a collective front lawn. And then, like, from those row houses, I'll probably end up building them off streams because, you know, building is so fucking time consuming. This goddamn thing. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm really, uh, ex I would, I don't know, I like that, uh, the idea of just having, like, row houses and then, like, a courtyard. And then on that, have, like, the main street. Um, I just saw a picture of that and I was like, oh, yeah, I can fucking, yeah. Don't shoot me. No shoot. No shoot, please. No shoot, please. What the fuck do I keep my stuff though? Now we're gonna kill another 10 minutes just wandering around my Minecraft world. Isn't that amazing? Um, what I really want to do is I want to make like a 20 minute fucking minecart uh, ride. So then anytime I want to put on the show, I can just literally put that on and just be like, yeah, so I can, you know, Ambient content just going through the countryside or something. Hmm. Well, it appears I have lost my bricks. Because I don't remember using them. Because, yeah, he sells 10. I had them somewhere. Oh. Well, fuck you. I do think that there's also this like weird thing where like what becomes counterculture because um, I had a really strange experience growing up I just had a very odd family and a very odd childhood I suppose that is one way that it could be put and uh, yeah this is the new this is Fort Moore I think I've already explained this and I've already shown it off but loving Fort Moore Fort Moore is the fucking shit um, I completely lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah, so what seems, like, what appears to be counterculture? Like, I don't know about you guys, but I grew up with, like, this, like, fucking weird, like, halfity half. Like, I don't. <laughs> the, the only way I can explain my family environment is that everything is extreme. And I don't mean, like, it's like, oh, they're right wingers. It's like, I have, like, a fucking lesbian, gay man loving, man hating fucking conservative mother she's dead now so i don't fucking whatever but you know it was like this really weird fucking mix of attributes where it's like she's like a fucking bdsm fiend where it's like she's like getting my dad to like drip wax on her and then telling me about this when i'm like three to four years old so then it's like oh yeah yeah, yeah. you know you go to school and they talk about sex ed and it's like bruh 
I'm I'm pretty good. Uh, I don't <laughs> you don't really need to worry about me. Um, but yeah, that was just like you know it was super strange because it's like it's like all this stuff that's supposed to be like fun and exciting, and it's like yeah, I guess it was fun and exciting back in the fucking like 60s when my mom was you know what like back in her 40s. <laughs> that's not that's not accurate, but you know what I mean. Like where it's just like. This stuff that just seems like it's like oh my god free love and like oh my god i can be a woman that loves women and it's like yeah i've heard it all before so like to me it's like a heterosexual woman is way more counterculture than that shit where it's like if a woman's like i respect masculinity and i like you know really have a deep appreciation and a place in my life for the people that i love you know like i'm like oh damn that girl thinks for herself that is smart that is counterculture that is less of the same fucking bullshit i've been fed my whole life meanwhile it's like you know rich white girl Middle class white girl. I don't care what else she has in her. She's fucking white. He's like, oh my god, wah, wah, wah. you know, I'm fucking gay, and that makes me so unique. I like kind of like women, and it's like, oh my fucking god, I've done this all before, dude. Like my fucking dead mother is more progressive than you, and she was a conservative. So like, I just don't even like, you know. I guess maybe my life very strange. Maybe that's the moral of the story for me. It's just that it's like, hey, dude, you're a fucking weirdo. So don't talk about your personal experiences because uh, then everybody will just judge you and think you're fucking strange. But I don't know. To me, like that has just been a uh, very confusing aspect of the culture war. Because then it's like, well, we're bringing the new ideas. And it's like, do you mean the stuff that I was told when I was four? Or like the whole, like, my fucking father grew up in Pakistan. You know? So it's like, it's just like this very... Strange shit where it's like, yeah, Iran, China, in, uh, India, all that shit. Been hearing about that, you know. Been hearing about that my whole fucking life. Uh, been hearing about the gays my whole fucking life. Been hearing about Donald Trump since like 2008, you know. And it was like, it was just all this shit where it's just like, I don't know. Like, it, it just gets frustrating that people try to like think that they're doing anything new. And it's like, you're just literally, you have... Like, as somebody who's literate, the, the stuff that you're operating off of isn't even fucking avant-garde anymore, you know? It's like, it's not even really living up to the, uh, to the, what, what's the word, the reputation of, like, countercultural stuff when it's like, bro, you have, like, fucking, when you have, like, fucking grants for your identity and people will pay you to go to school just because you exist as yourself, you're not, it's a psyop, guys, you know? No, that's not your identity. Obviously, you're a useful idiot. Like, wouldn't that... Doesn't that just seem to be the more obvious explanation to you? Or, like, maybe I'm just off base, but, like... Hmm. To me, that's just what that looks like, because at least... Well, so maybe I'm just calling a spade a spade. But, like, that's... I don't know. I just don't agree with the idea... I just don't agree with the idea that you're so fucking special. I don't agree with the idea that it's like, I nobody else can understand me because I'm super deep and like, uh, nobody ever had sex before me. I actually invented sexuality because, you know, I'm the first young person to be young. Um, you know, and it's like all that shit where it's just like, come the fuck on, dude. Do you have any hubris? Do you have any sort of understanding like how to respect somebody who's not simply you? Mm-hmm. I have a theory. So if I touch, if I break something with my fortune pickaxe, wow, well, leave me alone. I know, I know, it's super dorky. But so, is there any clay here? Do we have clay? Clay. Okay. Huh? Uh, uh, I think that's gravel. Mm. It might be different in this texture pack. I'm guessing not, though. Can I just switch my texture pack? Does not appear to be so. It's like, what's this? Yeah. Okay, cool. So I got four out of that. What happens if I do this? 
No, it's the same amount every time. Okay. I guess we could develop this because, yeah, that's the uh, beginning of a ravine. We could develop that into like a house and then just take all that. Yeah, we could just take all this shore. Uh, I think I'm going to convert that entire shore into like a little settlement. It seems like the best idea. I mean, also, if we get live streams, we can just do like long form Minecraft uh, live streams. That shit's fun. Ah! Where do I keep my furnaces? Nice. Is that this one? Oh, this one. Oh, this one. Oh, this one. There we go. But yeah, so I'm thinking just like. So we don't really have a good map here, but let's update that. just these three that need to become plant and then those can be that but I'm thinking like out there like deep on the other side of the territory so I guess we'd have to go down to the uh, train station to show but yeah I'm just collecting uh, brick because I want to do like those brick row houses because I feel like if we had a settlement like that um, towards the middle it'd make everything a little bit less depressing or not depressing but a little bit less uh, also yeah yeah What is it? Is it something? Or is it? I don't fucking know. But <laughs> yes, I am an idiot. I'm an idiot, but I mean well. Um. Oh shit! Orla Gartland dropped a uh, dropped an album today, so check that out. Uh, shouts out Orla. But uh, yeah. So here, uh, I'd say like there, we could do like a row housing section there, or if we did a row housing section there. That could really help. Yeah, I think I might end up doing it like there, so it'd be like that, it'd be like a brick road. So making that into a brick road, making that into a row development, making that into a row development, making that to a row development, and then like doing that until like the woods region. So just kind of like converting all of this into like kind of a more dense row housing area. Um, that's already been sold to somebody else. So that or like this could be row housing. Because that would really help balance out this. Actually, yeah, I think I might develop it down there because I don't want to... Well, I really do want that to end up feeling more like something. Because um, the regions I'm most keen on developing right now, I guess, are like this plain land and this plain land. So... We could also do it there. If I recall correctly... Um, this region is like super not so like welcome to the Minecraft fucking segment where I'm just literally I'm doing urban planning and then the next time you see this world it will have been planned um, but yeah let's see why the fuck are you out here what are you doing um, so this we could flatten this I don't really see a point to it because it's like they're not really this is not really a natural defense is yeah we're definitely flatten this because we'll just take that lake and that lake will be for housing uh, and then we can build out a, yeah, we can build out a path there. And, like, this can be a courtyard, so, like, this could be a path along this. And that path could lead up to this, and this would be, like, an internal little courtyard. Meanwhile, we could do row housing, like, starting, row house starting. So we do, like, you know, let's say four, we could do one, two, three, four, five. We could do, like, five or six of brick. And like that would just be like you know like a walkway so we could just do a six thing brick walkway and then this will open up to like you know row housing so like one two three four seven 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 and then blow those back out like 22 each so like that would be like around like you know here and then like that would be its own little thing and then here we could have like another wall do the same thing back that up over there and then that this would be like a little you know firm row house region 
So that's uh, that's just me planning aloud. I'm gonna go keep looking for clay and doing all that. And that's how uh, that's just the update on the Minecraft world. Uh, this is the Friday episode, and honestly, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it off with music because it's too fucking hot. Um, if you'd like to support the show, please check out our links. Um, I have everything on a campsite now. So if you wanted to check out the campsite, it has the Twitter, it has the YouTube, it has the TikTok, and it has the Patreon. Best way to support the show is the Patreon. Of course, for $5, you can get four books by me, which is around like 200,000 words of content. That's going to be more, that's, it's almost the size of Moby Dick. Uh, for 20 bucks, we'll talk about if uh, I can get any of the topics that you're interested on the show. So um, that's about all. Thanks so much for tuning in. Um, I'll be back next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Fridays. That's my whole gig. Um, Otherwise, let's let's uh, let's go fucking around. Let's go fucking around. So, what is going on with uh, what's going on with? Let's just let's just look up our our friends at Skeletal Lightning. Um, Harmony Woods. They just did something new. You got Jack. But again, yeah, this, I mean, I have a lot of clothing from these people. I have a lot of albums from these people. This is, like, definitely one of my um, foundational bands. Very, very important. Very, you know, just a crucial, crucial thing. I mean, we got Droughts. We got Jack. We got, you know, everybody on this, I'd pretty much stand up for and just say, like, we're the fucking shit. Uh, so that's basically where I stand with that. Um, let's put up harmony. Let's put up harmony woods. Um, because it seems like well, actually, I'll just we're gonna end it with Jack. We're gonna end it with Jack. Uh, if you guys are curious about what picture I was trying to, so this is what I. Well, that's, that's Virginia. Fuck Virginia. Um. Yeah, I am obviously just trying to go for, uh, just go go for this. Yeah, I really want this sort of just like, you know, no cars, so it's just like a brick walkway. But like, that's the vibe I'm going for, is just a sort of like dense, like, you know, really thing, because I feel like if I had that for the whole region of the Minecraft world, that'd be really fucking tight, you know? Um... But yeah, I'm too hot. So also, this is the high, This is the campsite. I don't know if I explained that, but so you got, you watch on YouTube, you watch on TikTok, you read on Twitter, you support on Patreon, you do all that, and that's amazing. Um, his most recent stuff is solo takes. Another day, looking back, and one. Got your jack. So, uh, I'm gonna probably fuck off. Did I get here? I try and serve my life. Find me now. Can they linger? Do they all but disappear? Maybe I don't. I never will I lose track when I move this fast But I sworn I was standing Sworn I was standing still Maybe it's what they say Moving in the way Are the same Speak.
another day I follow trails of different voices Asking me if I'm my father Disillusioned by the choices I've made Or chosen not to make My tired search for me Obsessive. Uh, so, change is coming. Generally investing more in uh, you know, aesthetics and production. Episode 52. Like the stillness of the sunlight. As it spills across my floor If I'm alive and here Then why I always wished for more If I'm happy in the moment Shining brighter so in love Wouldn't it be something To forget what I just because it's been on my mind recently, is that there isn't an inherent response to, I think that liberalism, liberal ideology, vaguely the West, is being outflanked right now in terms of argumentation. Because I think that there's a rude awakening about the reality of freedom or the reality of... I don't really know how to call it, but we can say freedom. Uh, if your freedom is your highest value and your only value, then you're really just making the world for the most talented. You're really just allowing the people who are the most successful to succeed. And when you're looking at life, and you're looking at states, and you're looking at societies, and you're looking at community, we don't really form these because of the best among us. The best among us might be the most service, but they're not why you have city walls. You know, Achilles doesn't need a city. He can go out in the middle of a field and make himself at home. But the average person, or even the sub-par person, needs to have a certain quality of life that is respectable and worthwhile. And this is where it's like, you know, freedom is something I think is inherently important. I very much value freedom of speech. I very much value um, a lot of those things. And that's why I try to interact with people as different from myself as possible. Um, so, you know, to me, I am sympathetic to all these things, but I also see that criticism and I do not see a valid response where it's like, yeah, no, we, uh, we just care about talented people. You know, it's like, that's not, uh, that's not where I want to go. You know, it's like, uh, to me, it's like humans matter no, no matter whether they're talented or intelligent or whatever you want to judge them for. Um, I care about humans because they're alive and I want to see them succeed and be healthy and be well. Um, that has nothing to do with, like, you know, uh, high performance. And that's where I get sort of, uh, that's, that's an idea that I think is, like, floating around, uh, that I just think, uh, you know, I don't know. You know, it's, I think that there is an inherent uh, conflict of morality there that people don't really address. Um, because it's like, they're in their pursuit of protecting the individual, they let individuals down. Like, uh... Yeah, so, so it's, it's like, like maybe, maybe people can go to space, maybe people, people can do incredible things, things maybe, it, you know, know, rah, rah, rah. But also at the same time, time like, can a relatively unintelligent woman in the middle of Wyoming raise a child? You know, can she start a family? 
things like that? Do we have roads? You know? How is our access to local food? Like, do we have local infrastructure built up? And, like, that's a much more grounded and pragmatic question that I just don't feel like we really address. We're much more down to, like, talk about how great our ideas are and much less interested in, like, talking about brick by brick how we improve our environment. Um, so I just thought that was something that's on my mind. And I just decided to share it with you. Back to Jack. The pitch black of a winding mountain road. I watch from the mouth of the river's flow. Two boys howling at the moon. Was this the last time I saw you? Strange feeling in my head Like I've been here, here before train platform Listening for the rumble of a storm Two boys fall into the gloom Was this the last time I saw you? Jack, this is William Boney. This is a record by them. Love them to death. Grew up on this band. Jack is the singer. Uh, so you can see lyrics. You can see the lyrics on the back. This is also Skeletal Lightning uh, release. Uh, I keep that on the set just because I love the album cover and it means a lot to me. Uh, just because, you know, Jack's music is fucking awesome. This stuff is a very different vibe. But it's uh, a lot more chill, and uh, I think it's a lot easier to show to older audiences. So he's got a wide spectrum of music. I think there's something for everyone. Um, that's the show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, please check out, first off, please support Jack. Please buy something of his. He's fucking incredible. Uh, Skeletal Lightning, also an incredible label. Please, uh, you know, shout out all that. They have new stuff on the way. Um, so let me... I, I don't... Let me see if there is a link that I can give you to that. Um, cause let's see. Uh, so let me just. Uh, sorry, that was just dead air. Um, but you know, we're just you know living our life, doing our things, etc. Uh, uh, cool. Here we are. Um, so, Constantine, hey people, who's a fan of Constantine, Slow Drive, and Baroness? We got some new stuff you might dig. So, I don't, I don't know exactly which piece we're referencing right now, but I will be sure to try to cover it. Um, also, I got this new band, so I'm going to be looking into their music soon.
Um, anyway, guys, that's, that's the show. show. Thank, Thank you so, so much, much for hanging out. out. Again, check, check us out. So check, check out Skeletal Lightning on Twitter. Check, check out Pilot via this link. link. Uh, funny, I'm in the same shirt. That's funny, actually. But uh, yeah, I got YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, Patreon. That's it. I'm back tomorrow. Well, I'm back Tuesday. I'm back next week. Tuesday, Wednesday, Fridays, hour each day. We go through news, all that. Today was a little bit of a lurky episode because we've been just doing some back end stuff. And I'm going to be changing up the set. So hopefully, Tuesday, we have a little bit of something new coming to you. Anyways, thanks so much. Um, have a good day.